Fractions is probably one of the most feared and hated concepts in maths. And it's no wonder students really struggle with it. And uh, it's probably basically because there's one fundamental thing that most people just, just don't get. It. And that is that in a fraction, I can only divide away common factors, not common terms. Now, I probably sound gibberish to you, so let me explain. Let's say I've got the number 2 plus 3, and that is divided by 4 plus, uh, let's make it 2 plus 8. 2 plus 8. <coughs> Now, most of us would know, okay, well, I can, I can say 2 plus 3 in the numerator. I can just simplify that first and see that's 5 over, and in the denominator, I see 2 plus 8 is 10. So I actually have 5 divided by 10. Now, in this question, I can, or in this case, I can see, okay, 5 is just 5 times 1, but 10 can be 2 times 5. And that means I factorized 10. I divided it up into its factors, into a product of its factors. And now I can see, oh, 5 goes into itself once and into 5 once. So that I have actually 1 over 2. That's what's remaining. But some of us might have seen in the beginning, oh, but if I can cancel those two fives, then surely I could have cancelled these twos in the beginning. And then I'll be left with 3 over 8. But as we can see, 3 divided by 8 is close to a half, but it is unfortunately not a half. You can't cancel these two because they terms. Terms are added and subtracted. Factors are multiplied and divided. And that means, therefore, I can divide them into each other. 5 divides into itself once and into 5 once again. I can divide them into each other and therefore I have, um, I can simplify. But how does this relate to what I want to talk about? I want to talk about a binomial denominator. A binomial denominator means I've got a denominator bigger or with more than one term. Bi meaning two, nomial meaning many. So two terms. Let's have a look. Here is a very typical example of a fraction where I've got a binomial denominator. And some of you that made the mistake of cancelling x's because there's x's. And 2 can go into itself once and into there 2 times. You might get an answer of 2 minus 2 is 0 over 1. I, I don't know. That is complete utter nonsense. Remember, we cannot divide when there are pluses and minuses. If I've got more than one term in the numerator or more than one term in the denominator, I cannot cancel common factors. I have to factorize. Factorize is the process of making many terms into one term with many factors. Now let's see, I, I can see the numerator can be factorized a little bit. I can take out a 2 as a common factor, so what is remaining? x minus 2. How many terms do I have in the numerator? Only one! Okay, forget about what's inside the bracket. Outside of the bracket there's no added pluses or minuses, so I've got one term. In the denominator, I still have two terms, but let's just put that whole term in a bracket. That whole two terms into, into one bracket. Then I see, aha, uh -huh, my whole denominator, if I consider everything in the denominator as one thing, by just making brackets around it, it can divide with something in the numerator. And this answer will just be 2. I'll let you see if that's really true. If I take any value for x, any value, well, what can I think of? What's the time? It's now nine, uh, 18 minutes past 9, so let's use 18. 
2 times x, change x with 18. I just want to illustrate, you don't need to do this every time you do a question. But just Let's just see if it's really true. 2 times 18, I replace the 18 in the x, and apparently, no matter what x is, my answer must be 2. So let's see what the answer is in the numerator. 2 times 18 is 36 minus 4 is 32. 32 divided by 18 minus 2 is 16. 32 divided by 16 is 2. Any number you can put into x will simplify to an answer of 2. Okay, which means that fraction, the answer will always be 2. Let's look at another example. Again, I see in this example, I've got a binomial denominator. A binomial denominator means I cannot cancel. I have to factorize. I have to factorize before I can cancel anything. Because I've got two terms. In the numerator, two terms in the denominator. Let's factorize. I hope you saw this. I hope you could see that in the numerator, I've got an x squared minus 9, which means I can get two brackets. That's the difference of two squares, because 9 can be written as 3 times 3. So that's x times x, a plus and a minus 3 and a 3. And that is divided with, and in the denominator, can we factorize the denominator? Why do I want to factorize? Why don't I leave it just like that? Because if you look at that, whole thing is a unit. It can't cancel with one of the brackets. So I'm going to try and factorize it as well. Always first try common factor. I can take it a common factor of 3. What's left out? Well, what's remaining? 3 divided, uh, 3 x divided by 3 is x. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. Look at that. I've got a single term in the numerator with two bracket um, factors. A single term in the denominator with a 3 and a bracket factor and look at that one of my brackets is the same as another bracket so they can divide into each other this one goes into itself once and to that one once as well so I'm left with x plus 3 divided by 3 now you remember if I've got if I've got a 3 or a single value in the denominator a single term, we call it a monomial, then I can distribute it to both. I can give the 3 to that one and to that one. So I could, if I wanted to, go to x divided by 3 plus 3 divided by 3, which is just a third x. That's what I get when I multiply something with, divide something with 3, it's, I get a third. Okay, a third x plus 1. And shall we test it? Okay, it's now 922. So let's put a 22 in there. 22 squared minus 9 divided by 3 times 22 minus 9. Now I'm going to use my calculator for this one. Just to save some time, 22 squared minus 9 is equal to 475 divided by 3 times 22 minus 9 is equal to 57 57 okay mm, I wonder if that's what we're going to get here let's see if we take our answer and we put a 22 in x there so 22 or oh, actually a third so we're going to take a third times 22 plus 1 See what answer we get. 1 divided by 3 times 22. Oh, that's wrong. 1 divided by 3 times 22 plus 1. And I get an answer of 8, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So I get 8, 3 repetitively. Let's see what's the answer of 475 divided by 57. 8,3 repetitively. Okay, now I just chose a random number 4x. 
to see if I get the same answer that I had in the beginning. Because remember in maths, we're not allowed to change things. I can do whatever I want as long as I keep the balance. Okay, so in other words, my initial question must equal the final question in value. They're still the same in value. The one is just simplified compared to what we used to have. Okay, one more example and I'll make it difficult this time. 